Wie <lacht> kommst du auf? Na. Wie jetzt da? Ja, oh, <lacht> so, jetzt sind wir da endlich da hier. <lacht> so. Wie, ne? <lacht> Was denn? So, <lacht> okay. <lacht> hat alles seine Richtigkeit. Oh, endlich da. Ja, so. finally, here we are. Haben wir es gut hergefunden, ne? Ja. Yeah. <lacht> so, we did it. Um, yeah. Let's talk about on the water rugby. Um, maybe some of you know us already from the Champions no, Cup. No, stop. No, for this, that's the next one. See, you have to be. So, you can't be so here. You must be a full set. So, we have to mix it. So, we have to mix it with the things. Yeah. And I would, I would like to mix it with the arch. So, we have to mix it with the arch. So, it's. Then, can you see? It's not a usual direction. Then, you just walk with your eyes. So. Jetzt haben wir es endlich geschafft, aber jetzt sind wir hier. Okay. Was denn? I want to be there. Browser, Position. okay. Right, so it's... There we are. Okay. Jetzt okay? Is it okay for you? Yes, thank yeah. you. Here we are, here we are, finally. Bienvenidos. Hello. Welcome to talk about Anawada Rugby. Welcome. Hello. Probably some of you um, already know us from the Champions Cup. Um, we did the commentaries of the live stream and uh, it was quite a big success, so we had the idea to start a little show. Actually, Vinny came up to Lorena and me and asked us, hey, come on, you want to do the commentaries with us? So, here we are with our first show. And uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves to you. This is uh, Lorena, Vinny, and yeah. Wolf. Chicos. Eh, bienvenidos toda la gente de habla hispana de, después de la Champions Cup, o sea muchos de ustedes, eh, no sé que en Venezuela y Colombia nos siguieron eh, surgió la idea de, vine, de hacer, I'm talking now, de hacer oh, un programa eh, para la comunidad de rugby y para poder discutir los temas de actualidad eh, y para poder propagar este deporte y, y comunicarnos ¿no? Así que por eso decidimos hacer uh, Talk About Underwater Rugby. Este es el primer programa, la primera emisión. Y bueno, el equipo, aquí estamos. Vine, Lorena y Wolf. Ahora les podemos decir un poquito, una breve introducción de cada uno. ¿no? Who we are? Yeah, a little bit about ourselves. This is, uh, like we've already said, Lorena. She's a sports teacher and a tour director. Uh, she's traveling a lot all over Europe. And she's playing on the water rugby now for uh, almost, 15 uh, years. almost 15 years. Long time. Mm -hmm. no. um, this is Vinne. Um, he's our electronic wizard and uh, the heart and soul of the Champions Cup. He does uh, all the technical stuff for the live stream and brings us these great pictures home to you. Me, I'm Wolf. I'm a free journalist um, and I own a bookshop uh, here in Berlin. How long have you been playing rugby? Ah, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> over 10 years, right? Well, yeah, I'm and playing. Vinne, he has been playing for what? over 40 years. 40 Can you years? imagine? I wasn't even born, so we have yeah. a lot to learn from him yeah. uh, during the, the following program. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, he has a lot of big good stories about on the water rugby in the beginning. It's, it's great. Now let talk me translate. About Just shut up. Lo que estábamos diciendo, chicos. Bueno, mi nombre es Lorena. Eh, yo soy profesora de educación física, me mudé a Berlín hace como unos 15, 16 años y hace 15 años que juego al rugby. De Wolf aquí, él eh, tiene una tienda de libros en Berlín y también hace un poco de, de, de turismo, trabaja como guía y, tra y uh, juega desde hace más de 10 años al rugby. Y vine aquí, que es el alma de la Champions Cup. Juega al rugby hace más de 40 años, así que tenemos un montón que aprender, un montón de historias de él y tiene una tienda de eh, productos electrónicos ¿no? y es el que está detrás de toda la técnica y de, 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 del programa en sí, ¿no? el que organiza todos los videos, las entrevistas, así que sin él no habría programa. So what we try to do here, um, we got a great feedback for uh, the commentaries of the Champions Cup and um, we all had the feeling, especially Vinny had the feeling, there's a lot of potential there. We can talk about it. We can talk about it on the water rugby and uh, especially talk about it with you, with the people around there in the community. So we want to have interviews, we want to have short clips and uh, we think there is, there is a lot to talk. So 
we just start right here with our first clip so you see what we do. Eh, lo que estaba diciendo Wolf es que, bueno, luego de la Champions Cup decidimos que, que había um, un gran potencial eh, para poder desarrollar un programa de televisión de internet para poder traer la comunidad de rugby, eh, para acercar los diferentes lugares, en los diferentes países. Somos un deporte amateur, no tenemos eh, mucha ayuda de los organismos oficiales, entonces nos tenemos que valer por nosotros mismos y eh, decidimos tener un programa en donde poder tener in, eh, entrevistas, hablar eh, de los temas de actualidad, un programa de la comunidad de rugby para la comunidad de rugby. Así I'm, que aquí estamos. I'm not always sure Lorena is translating really what I said. I think she's telling me that I don't That's understand. I don't understand she, anything. No entiendo lo que dice. <laughs> I think she's telling a whole different a, story I'm about us. I'm doing my own program. <laughs> yeah, she's just promoting herself. Estoy haciendo mi propio programa, chicos. Yeah. Okay, you see, you um, we have a lot of talk, and we will talk a lot, but um, now we start first and, clip. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. The second day in the German Women League took place in Berlin with seven women teams from all over Germany meeting to compete. With nine games and a strict timetable ahead, the Berlin girls who hosted the games outsourced the refereeing to their men, so all the players were able to concentrate on their games and the recovering in between. Nobody likes to have tough games and do referee duty, especially if you referee underwater and have to play directly afterwards. The pool area was a busy place for more than nine hours, teams warming up on land and in the water, briefing and debriefing of teams and the occasional outcry of happy or frustrated players during a game. Although the level of the games is quite high with many players quite experienced and members of the National League team, the numbers of league playing women altogether are declined with not enough young players filling the ranks from the bottom up and the long distances between cities like Stuttgart and Berlin. Ich bin hier mit der Spielbetriebsleiterin der deutschen Damenliga, Heide Böhm. Hallo Heide. Hallo Wolf. Was sind so deine Aufgaben in der deutschen Damenliga? In der Damenliga bin ich dafür verantwortlich, die Pässe zu lizenzieren, sprich die Tauchtauglichkeit bzw. die sportärztliche Untersuchung zu kontrollieren und das Alter, damit wir sicherstellen können, dass wir nach Wettkampfordnung die Spielerinnen zum Spielbetrieb zulassen. Wie ist der Aufbau der Damenliga hier in Deutschland? In der Damenliga in Deutschland spielen zurzeit sieben Teams. Diese sieben Teams sind über ganz Deutschland äh, verteilt. Wie viele Termine gibt es? In der Liga, diese Liga spielen wir in fünf Terminen, die jeweils in einer Turnierform äh, ausgetragen werden. Und wir haben acht bis neun Spiele pro Tag mit allen Mannschaften. Gibt es sowas wie einen Favoriten in der Liga, eine Mannschaft, die bisher alles und immer alles gewonnen hat? Durch die gute Vereinsarbeit und die Arbeit der Nationaltrainer sind wir in einer super Situation, dass äh, die Qualität der einzelnen Spielerinnen über die ganzen Mannschaften verteilt ist, sodass ähm, es schwer zu sagen ist, ob es dieses Jahr wirklich einen Favorit gibt. Insgesamt ein hohes Niveau in der deutschen Damenliga. Ein so hohes Niveau haben wir während ich Spiele noch nie gehabt. Gibt es für dich irgendwelche Zukunftswünsche, die du an die Damenliga hättest, von deiner Perspektive als Spielbetriebsleiterin aus? Wir brauchen das Engagement jedes Einzelnen, jeder einzelnen Spielerin, damit wir die Mannschaften erhalten können und vielleicht sogar noch neue Mannschaften gewinnen können. Vielen Dank und noch viel Spaß beim Spielen. The next three competition days will take place in February 
March and May. Altogether, they ended without big surprises. The score table shows a strong Stuttgart Weinheim team on the top, followed by USC Langen, the former Mannheim team, and Duisburg on the third place. Hallo, willkommen zu Talk About on the Water Rugby. Ähm, stell dich doch einfach mal vor und sag uns, für welche Mannschaft du spielst. Hi, ich bin Tanja. Ich spiele in Stuttgart, Stuttgart Weinheim. Ihr habt ja in äh, diesem Jahr auf dem Champions Cup gespielt. Ähm, erzähl mal, äh, wie das Spiel so gelaufen ist auf dem Champions Cup, so, was eure Erfahrungen oder Schlussfolgerungen daraus waren. Also für die meisten meiner Mädels war es ja das erste Mal, dass wir auf so einem Niveau gespielt haben. Das war für die alles noch sehr neu, waren sie sehr aufgeregt. Ich als Trainer hatte mir vorgenommen, unter die ersten drei zu kommen. Das haben wir hervorragend geschafft und sind eigentlich sehr glücklich mit unserem zweiten Platz. Vor dem Champions Cup ist natürlich so nächstes Mal die Erwartung hoch an euch jetzt auch. Vor allem jetzt in der zweiten Liga hier in Deutschland. Was ist euer Plan? Das Ziel ist natürlich wieder Deutscher Meister zu werden. Wir wollen unbedingt wieder auf den Champions Cup und da uns verbessern. Natürlich stehen noch Zwei, dreieinhalb Spieltage aus, aber wir werden alles versuchen. Was sind denn bei euch so, was ist die Struktur bei euch von Spielern? Habt ihr sehr viele junge Spieler, neue Spieler? Also bei uns ist eigentlich relativ jung, alle so zwischen 20 und 30 Jahren. Also so alt wie ich ist eigentlich äh, nur noch die Maren. Und danach kommt eigentlich eine größere Lücke und dann kommen dann die Nächsten. Wie kommen die Mädels dazu, ähm, bei euch Rugby zu spielen? Also wir haben relativ viele Mädchen, Mädchen schon mal in Stuttgart. Wir haben, glaube ich, 12 oder 13 Rugby-Spieler Mädchen allein in Stuttgart. Und Langenau und Weinheim sind auch nicht sehr weit weg. Mhm. Und äh, alles unter einer bestimmten Fahrzeit und wir machen regelmäßige Trainingslager, wo wir da sagen, okay, wir treffen uns gemeinsam mal einen ganzen Tag oder auch mal für drei, vier Stunden, wo wir ein Bad kriegen und trainieren gemeinsam und dadurch haben wir auch recht gutes Mannschaftsgefühl. Was sind denn so eure, von der Technik und der Taktik her eure Pläne? Also kannst du jetzt irgendwas sagen, was, was typisch ist für Stuttgart? Das Wichtigste ist bei uns eigentlich, wir spielen immer zusammen. Jeder hilft jedem. Das ist auch die Stärke unserer Mannschaft. Wir haben teilweise gar nicht so gute Spielerinnen, aber dadurch, dass wir alle füreinander da sind und füreinander kämpfen, jeder hat immer zwei Anspielstationen, können wir das Spiel relativ gut laufen lassen. Jetzt hat sich das natürlich die letzten Jahre auch noch gut entwickelt. Jetzt haben wir auch ein paar richtig gute Go-Getter noch drin. Unsere Verteidigung steht recht souverän. Ich denke mal, was die Verteidigung angeht, haben wir die beste Verteidigung in Deutschland. Das sind alles 
Nationalmannschaftsspielerin, ehemalige Nationalmannschaftsspielerin oder Leute, die das auch schon verdammt lange machen. Sehr schön, gut. Vielen Dank für das Gerne. Gespräch. Okay, aber eigentlich sollten wir noch... Was wir nicht machen wir jetzt? Aber jetzt pass mal auf, wir trinken jetzt erstmal einen Kaffee hier. Ich mach mal den Kaffee. Oh, ich glaube, wir sind wieder dran. Wir sind Ach, dran. geht schon wieder los, oh, yeah, aber okay. ich mach trotzdem den Kaffee weiter. Alright. Um, next clip coming up is an uh, interview we recorded uh, earlier. It's with uh, Jörg Ottelmann. He's the coach of the women national team. Um, Ottelmann? Oh, okay. Ich kann den jetzt nicht wieder zurückgeben. Okay, so. Oh, we're back. We are back. <laughs> okay, coming up next is an interview we recorded already uh, in advance with uh, Jörg Ottel. He's the um, coach of the women national team. And uh, we will talk about uh, what we will talk about with him. With him? Yeah, about uh, how it's going on with the German I think team. you see it in the interview. And also about the upcoming um, World Cup in Cali 2015. Let's Enjoy. go and see it. Okay. So, um, hello, Jörg Ossel. Welcome. Uh, talk Good about. Time. On water rugby, um, it's good to have you with us uh, and good to hear you again after the Champions Cup. You were a big help um, by commentaries for the games. So let's start with the first questions. Where are you right now, Jörg? Uh, yeah, not uh, unfortunately not beside you. Uh, I'm at so the, the moment in Tokyo. Uh, in Japan, so uh, due to my job uh, working for a Japanese company, um, I visit uh, the headquarter of my colleagues uh, uh, several times a year in Tokyo and uh, all over the world. And at that moment, you reach me in Tokyo and I'm sitting in a hotel and have a view out of the skyline from Tokyo. Very nice. So we're really international. We're uh, already in our first interview and we're talking. Uh, to Japan and Tokyo, so that's great. Very nice. So, first question for you again. Um, how did you become the coach um, of the women's national team uh, of Germany? Just a short okay. summarize. So basically, uh, due to my history, I was a national player from uh, 1985 to 99 and then uh, I retired from, from uh, as a national player and uh, basically in 2004 I almost retired from the sport and uh, I restart for some physical fitness and training and I can get in contact with uh, some some people and some guys from training and they asked me to join a uh, uh, old, old men's cup team or old, old boy team and I was a little bit surprised because when you ask to, to play in an old boys cup team I, it's not a good feeling. <laughs> uh, and then I, I visited with them a tournament and uh, this tournament uh, I just by accident I joined a discussion about the more we reduce only the participants on the training camps of pot uh, potential candidates uh, okay. who might go on. Uh, the uh, championship. Okay, I see. So it, we down, we, we reduced the number from 50 to 24, I think it's the, the actual number at the moment, who has a chance to go to, to, to Colombia. Okay, okay, I see. So, so that is, yeah. So at the moment, uh, but uh, uh, after Colombia, uh, the uh, trip to Colombia, we are will do again the workshops, the normal training camps, sometimes which we open for to open the chance for new players to show themselves. And of course, we are continuously watching players, tournaments uh, to identify potential candidates. Okay. But there's no restriction or strict rules, something like that. Uh, I care mainly the performance of the. the the players and their personal attitude. Okay, I see. 
So, with your experience um, um, over, over these years uh, on the water rugby, did you uh, see a change in the way uh, we play on the water rugby today uh, compared to the last years? Is there a paradigm yeah. change? I think uh, for watching the games, uh, the, uh, in the past the game was more attractive. Okay. It was more faster, it was more open. It's now a more defense related game. Okay. So you see more so the, when you attack the, the when I started you have just the goalkeeper to protect the goal and uh, it was much faster. Nowadays uh, we have the the goalkeeper, the defender, so at least two persons in front of the, the goal to defend and uh, it's always a lot of power uh, going into this. From the optical point of view, I would say in former times it was more attractive to watch and to see and maybe also to play. Okay, I see. Um, it's all more technical related, more speed, and, uh, more physical condition, not so much physical power related. Okay. Uh, but uh, on the end of it, the, 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 the time goes by and I think the most efficient game uh, uh, wins in this situation. Uh, so the, we get supported in that situation. And uh, of course, Colombia is something else than traveling in, in, uh, within Europe. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the cost for flights and accommodation, as far as I understand, will be covered from the Federation. And we're getting also some support for traveling costs to the training camps and uh, the rent of the facilities and something like that. But on, on the bottom line, we add un, uh, money to our hobby uh, or to our sport. Yeah. yeah and uh, that's since we are still amateur sport and it will be amateur sport because I don't know how to make money out of an amateur rugby. Yep. If yes. I would know that, I would be a professional player since <laughs> the early 80s. But uh, um, for me, it's uh, uh, important. Uh, the national team is not uh, a team like a club team where people go and if they have fun. Uh, the, the, the sporting performance is on top. Yeah. So the, uh, everyone has to, to do the doping thing uh, to be controlled. And it's, uh, not the doping thing, but <laughs> the doping controlling yeah. things and something like that. So uh, it's a very, uh, we have to do this in a very high professional way. And also that's my, my request to the team. Uh, to keep this high professionalism as someone who would earn the money from that. Yeah. If someone is not want to do this and looks to uh, see this more like a fun game, uh, he's not a member of my team. Okay. This is high, high performance uh, sports with a lot of effort and uh, yes, we have to add money for that, but uh, we have also high aim, so we want to be I, I train with the best girls in, in Germany, so and I think from my point of view, they have a high uh, uh, way of playing. Okay, all right. When you lose, when you lose concentration, when you yeah. not, you lose your self confidence. Yeah. Uh, when you get uh, in a situation where you foul, and uh, you be uh, getting a foul against you, and then you 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 overreact and something like that. Uh, that's the, the, the weak parts of the, the uh, sports um, where you're going to lose that. Okay. And uh, you don't have, that's everything not a secret. You look at the World Championship in soccer, look at the games. When the best defender make a, 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 a head uh, mark uh, against some other players <laughs> and get a red, a red card, this uh, that makes your, your team lose. If you lose the control, if you lose your control, your mindset, something like that, or you are you are not able to hold the pressure or something like that. Um, it's that's a, it's the most dangerous part in that, that situation. All right. And this is by professional players who get millions of euros. <laughs> same like a soccer player who's doing on the weekend uh, on the grass with his kids. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay, very nice. And uh, final question. 
Yeah, what do you love about underwater rugby? It's the only three-dimensional sport in the world. Yeah. And the only three-dimensional ball, a ball game in the world. It's special. It uh, has a lot of things. It's a team sport. It's somehow some uh, body contact, but uh, you have to be uh, very elegant uh, 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 underwater to be efficient. So uh, also uh, not only the strongest and biggest guys win yeah. the team or the biggest leagues win, win the games. We can do a lot of with techniques and uh, uh, you have a lot of flexibil uh, flexibility uh, in that sport. And this is the only sport I was good in. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's a good reason. <laughs> well, perfect. Um, that was great information you shared with us. Thanks a lot for that. And um, yeah, we're looking forward uh, to to hear more uh, about the team and everything about Kali. So um, um, we don't wish you good luck. You don't need good luck because you have a, a high professional team, uh, and uh, I know the girls. That's great. So thank you very much for sharing the information with us, and uh, good luck in uh, Tokyo. And uh, hope to talk to you soon and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Coming up next is an interview with uh, Thorsten Stanschus. He's one of the organizers of the Katyn Turnier and uh, is our first uh, clip about a tournament. Um, we want to um, have videos regularly about uh, coming and all the tournaments. So uh, please be free, feel free to send us your uh, own material, pictures or videos from uh, tournaments and we will put them here right into Talk Bound on the Water Rugby. Lo que vamos a ver ahora es un video eh, sobre el torneo de Ketchen. Es uno de los torneos eh, de aquí de Alemania, uno de los más viejos, está realizando desde hace 32 años. Y eh, bueno, esto es uno de los eh, primeros eh, videos que vamos a mostrar de torneos. Estamos interesados en que nos manden material eh, sobre torneos que pasan en diferentes partes del mundo y así podemos hacer un informe y compartirlo con el resto de la comunidad. Así que vamos a verlo. The whole interview will be on our website. Let's go. Uh, welcome to talk about on the water rugby. We have uh, Torsten Stanchus with us. He's the organizer of the Ketchen Turnier. So uh, Torsten, tell us something about you. Um, for how long are you playing on the water rugby? Uh, hello, I'm Matt Fitch. Um, yeah, my name is Torsten. Uh, I'm from Malmö and I'm playing on the water rugby um, since 2002. Um, I've been playing on the water rugby because I'm not the organizer of the one of the people organizing this tournament and also publishing the tournament. Okay. So there are a lot of people that run this tournament and uh, yeah, uh, and there's also one big guy here, this is the main organizer too. Okay. To okay. Clear. So something about you um, um, which I'm curious about because you're a physical, physical uh, therapist. Um, yeah. That's interesting because uh, can you tell us something about uh, the common injuries um, um, you have probably in your team and probably you know something how we can prevent these kind of injuries. Yes, sure. I'm a physiotherapist and I'm also practicing this, for example in the national teams and the men and the female and the juniors. So I'm, I'm trying to therapy and uh, try to help them. And we recognize for example um, that in the last years we got more and more problems for example with the wrists. This means for example, by handling the ball or, or keeping the ball directly later on. Yeah. And um, with, the, with the pushing of the ball, it happens more and more that people become a problem with the wrist. So, with some, with some examples from, for example, chino players or male players, they're, they get broken or they get uh, wow. really hard injured. Yeah. And a lot of problems are, depends on the sport, it's, for example, with the ankles. That's because of the fin swimming, you get all the ankles or maybe with the shoulder. When you gather uh, muscle patch, something like that, I think these are the main problems. What can we do? Here? Um, what, what? Excuse me, didn't get that. Them. Yeah, the easiest way, for example, to um, to introduce the the referees that they, for example, um, looking more for this, this punishing now yeah. and to fall. Yeah. Of course, I think this is one of the biggest rules we should 
um, we should follow because you did all the tournament that, for example, Breyer is pushing in the ball and the ball is yeah, yeah. falling out or not yeah. falling out and the, the yeah. game continues and often the players don't recognize that they get hurt because they're in distress situation and after the tournament, for example, then they're recognizing that there's something, for example, hurt in their, their wrist. Yeah. And, um, so I think, in my opinion, we should uh, we should give more penalties and for uh, something like that for every time they're uh, pushing in against the ball. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much for that. So, um, what is the Katyn Turnier, Thorsten? Um, where does the name come from? Uh, since when does the tournament uh, happen? Yeah, the Katyn Turnier is, I can say, one of the, the oldest uh, tournaments in the water rugby scene. We started the tournament, the first time it was, I think, 1984. Wow. The first tournament, it was held in Hebron, and the name it comes from, from a, yeah, from a, from a German writer. He wrote a novel, it was called The Katyn from Hebron, and it's very popular in Germany. And this is, you can see, also the symbol for Hebron, because the title from this novel was The Katyn from Hebron, and it was really close to the whole tournament, the, the Katyn Cup, yeah, the, the Cup of, of the Katyn. And this year we, we had the, the 32nd um, Katyn tournament. Okay. And so you can say here, yeah, when, when you compare it to other ones, for example, there are just a few tournaments that are older than us, for example, tournament in Stuttgart, or this one in the Chamber, in Stuttgart, or the Golden Bowl, or for example, this one in the Felix Cup. Uh, but then, uh, there are not really, really a lot of tournaments, and they are older than us. Yeah. So we are really traditional. And there are all tournaments every year, and the first, or maybe the second weekend in January, it depends on their New Year's date. Yeah. So when the New Year's date is really close, it's the first weekend in the, in the year, um, we choose the second one. But that's so, for example, if the New Year's party is on Monday, then it's no problem, we will have it on the weekend. Okay. And uh, for example, if the New Year's party is on Friday, okay, we take the second weekend in January. So it's every time it's, you can also say one, one or maybe the first uh, tournament we are offering in Germany. And this is also the reason why I think we are so successful. For yeah. example, our, our tournament is, uh, yeah, after the big, big winter break and the Christmas break and New Year's break, a lot of players and a lot of teams, they, they are yeah, in the winter break and we about practice and then we choose this day because we want to, to give the, yeah, the teams a chance to have a, a pre-season training, okay. for example, like this, uh, to prepare for the, for the round, for the next leech, for the next tournament coming up. Um, this, is, yeah, this is what we want to be. We want to be a, a pre-season tournament, and this is also used by a lot of, of leech teams, so we have really high, you can say we have a high quality of, of teams there, and of, um, yeah, of players. It's not, it's not the, the, the biggest, Biggest level, like for example the Golden Ball, but there are a lot of first reach players, or really good second reach teams. Okay. And um, so you can say it's about a, a level first reach level we are playing. Okay. Africa. Okay. Is it a, a normal tournament, or do you have special rules like you mix the, the teams um, with the players of the teams? Oh, no, we have some chances. The people can, they can come with their with the team, they can, and they can participate with the team, but they don't care about their mixed team or they're just all from the same team. Um, yeah, also, it's a long tournament. It depends, we depending on their, on their number or the amount of people that are coming. That means until um, eight teams, our, our, our the system is that every team plays against every team. Okay. So you, have, you, have, you play against every team in the tournament, and you all do the, the team with the best, all the winner. Yep. Um, when we are more than eight teams, we are playing groups. For example, then we make it two groups and so on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, one day or two days, the, the tournament? Yeah, it's a one-day tournament. Okay. It's just okay. one day because we have a lot of, of teams there from the region. And yeah. We recognize that the interest for a two-day tournament is not that big. And uh, so we decided just to keep it as a one-day tournament. And um, this is also the reason we, the, the maximum amount of teams that are allowed to participate is 12. Okay. And um, this year we have 12 teams. Okay. In average, our tournament is always about, you can say, nine or ten teams. We have this in average every year. But this year we, we had 12, and it was really good. Wow. And uh, this was really nice. And our, you can say, your speed 
we found in the last years is that we're not only we're not only offering a really good uh, tournament, we're also offering a really good party. Ah, cool. And I think this is what the tournament makes it more and more effective also in the past and also in the future. Very good. So you can say, after the tournament we're offering an, an all-you-can-eat dinner for players for a small amount, about 10 euros with a drink or something like that. And, and also we're having a polar party. It's, it's a big room and it's, it's reserved for us and prepared for us. And then we're having a band with a lot of music. Uh, we have an old time, we have an, uh, I was called the motor to meet the team. Uh, not the team, but it's a, um, something that uh, went like an 80s party or last year we had a crazy two party. So that the people had their chance to customize themselves. And okay. have a really re great day at the, at the night and also. Nice. So, Very uh, nice. To, the to spend a really good time, yeah. <laughs> What's coming next? Well, next is another interview we um, took with uh, Lena from St. Petersburg so the next interview is also about a tournament and this one is going to happen uh, in June in St. Petersburg it's called the White Knights Club and we will talk White Knights Cup <laughs> not club club cup, cup. and uh, yeah Lena will talk uh, about it with us in the upcoming clip lo que vamos a ver próximamente ahora es eh, una entrevista con Lena, una de las chicas que juega rugby en San Petersburgo, en Rusia. Ellos organizan eh, un torneo en junio eh, que se llama el torneo de la noche blanca porque en, en Rusia eh, durante el verano la noche es, no, no se oscurece, está todo el tiempo de día. Así que, bueno, vamos a verlo. Vamos. Before making this video, we ask you, what do you think about Russia? And now we can show you what you think. Is it real or not doesn't matter. The truth is. Waking up in the morning we always drink, but not vodka, tea. Yes, it's always cold in Russia, especially in winter. Yes, near every house there live a bear. Yes, there is a lot of snow in Russia, in winter of course. Russia is huge, real huge. Yes, we always play balalaika, before work, at work, instead of work and after work. And we dance, a lot. Is it true or not doesn't matter, the main thing is, me and my friend, we play underwater rugby, as you and your friends. Welcome to the White Knights Cup in Russia. So, I like to welcome to talk uh, about underwater rugby to Lena from Russia. And I would like to ask her to introduce herself, tell us who she is and what is her role in the White Knights Cup. Lena, hello. Hello, uh, I'm Lena from St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, and I'm one of the organizers of the international tournament, uh, the White Knights Cup. Uh, we hope to have it in June uh, this year, so I welcome everyone to come. <laughs> uh, tell me, why is it called the White Knights Cup? Uh, we have uh, real White Knights uh, in June. So the sun uh, doesn't go down, okay. so it uh, always uh, it isn't dark, and uh, this period of time is called white nights. So we decided that uh, this is uh, uh, our uh, mm, I don't know how to tell it's uh, the, the title. It's, it's a good name for the cup. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, like um, uh, our difference. Uh, from the other countries yes. and uh, we decided to name our cup uh, White Knights Cup. That's a good reason. Uh, also, just tell us a little bit about the history of the cup. How did it start? How long ago? Uh, it will be this third uh, uh, tournament. Uh, last year we uh, didn't have uh, this tournament because it was a difficult time for us, for Russia and uh, no one uh, 
wants to come, so there were only two or three teams, and it was uh, two little teams uh, for the tournament. Um, we have it for three years, and uh, uh, you know that Russia is very big, but uh, we have uh, underwater clubs only in, only in uh, three cities. So we decided that uh, this tournament will help uh, as to populate underwater rugby in Russia and also uh, all the cities, all the players uh, have, uh, will have an opportunity to come uh, to our beautiful city and uh, to visit it. Which cities do have um, underwater rugby teams in Russia? St. Petersburg and two others then? Who, who else? Uh, Moscow and uh, Tula region. Tula is a small city not far from Moscow. Okay, okay. And this is the three cities having yeah. three teams. So there's three and teams in Russia. Yeah, unfortunately only three. <laughs> and, this, and this is just men teams or you also happen to have three men teams and three women teams? Uh, we have uh, three male teams, uh, two female teams and uh, even uh, th uh, two uh, junior teams. Oh, well, cool. that's nice. a, it's a good job, I mean, for having just three cities with, with the sport. So, uh, tell us a little bit about the pool and about the location, where does it take place? Uh, it is, uh, oh, the pool is almost in the center of the city, uh, but the city is huge, so it will take time to go to the swimming pool, I suppose a half an hour from uh, all the hostels uh, you can stay. Okay. Uh, so uh, the swimming pool is a new one. It's uh, only five years old and uh, it is very huge. Uh, there are big screens where will be live uh, online translation of the all games. And uh, it is rather deep. It's five and five, uh, five and half uh, meters uh, deep. deep. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, uh, yes, but we have trainings uh, there, and uh, it's not so it, it's, deep. Yeah, you it's just good to play there. Yeah. There is a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> to swim, that's true. Is it long? How long it is, and how, how uh, wide it is? Can you it, tell? Uh, uh, it is not typical pool. Uh, it is uh, uh, 32 meters long and 25 meters uh, uh, wide, a bit. But uh, we make an artificial wall there. Okay. So you maybe saw it uh, two years ago. Um, we make uh, a wall only for this tournament. So the playing area is like uh, the Kamas rules. Okay. Perfect. Um, is it a one day or a two day tournament? It is a two day tournament. Saturday and, uh, and Sunday. Uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the whole days will be games. Of course, it will depend on uh, the number of teams, yeah. but each team will have uh, four or five games. And uh, are you planning to have it's just uh, mm, male teams or female teams as well? There's a women cup and a men cup, or that uh, what uh, is the two, two, two previous tournaments was only male and mixed team. Uh, every year we hope to have a female team, of course, okay. but uh, it's uh, difficult because uh, uh, girls are not so mobile. So um, I hope this year there will be a female team because we know that uh, girls from Turkey uh, want to come. Maybe okay. they will money and uh, wish to come this year. Okay, so hopefully you know if you have enough male and female teams, you can organize both tournaments so that you know for everyone who is you know willing to come to the tournament. Uh, tell me, is there a party at the end of the cup as well? Yeah, party is the best part, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so everyone uh, likes it because um, uh, we uh, rent a ship. Oh, really? Uh, okay. And uh, we uh, have a party on this ship and uh, we see uh, the whole city uh, on this ship. So 
uh, it flows uh, in the city, on the canals, uh, on the Neva River. It's uh, the main river in St. Petersburg. Wow. So it's uh, like, uh, yeah, party on the river. That sounds, that sounds very good. That I'm sounds really good. I'm already signing yeah. up for the tournament. <laughs> I don't know you both. Um, so tell us to all of the audience, why should, shouldn't we miss this tournament in St. Petersburg? Reasons to go there. You have some already. You mentioned some. Do you have more? Uh, I suppose uh, the first reason that uh, uh, not so many of uh, you were in Russia and especially in St. Petersburg. So it's a very beautiful city and it's a very old one. So it's, uh, I suppose you will have time to visit all the museums and just walk the city. So the second one is that uh, we make really good tournament. So with uh, online stream uh, from under the water and in live stream in internet uh, and uh, we have a good organization of the tournament. Um, so we have interviews and everything. So if you see uh, Euro League games, so we have something the same. Okay. So, uh, and of course the party. <laughs> <laughs> The third and not the last uh, reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds everything very, very good actually. And I've never experienced a white night in my life. Have you? No, nope, not yet. Not, not you know, yet. Be so really you, you should come. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question, Lena. Why do you play underwater rugby? Uh, a difficult question, but I play underwater rugby eight years already. So I don't know because. Um, it was uh, dull for me just to swim in swimming pool and my friend uh, uh, showed me underwater rugby and I decided that uh, this is sport for me. So, and uh, now I really understand that it is my sport. Uh, and um, I am the organization of the Pinagor Club, of uh, the uh, single club in St. Petersburg of underwater okay. rugby. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, so I just uh, collect uh, all my friends and said that underwater rugby is the best sport <laughs> and they believe me and uh, now we play underwater rugby. <laughs> That's great. Perfect. That's yeah, thank, thanks so much. Uh, we hope that uh, with this uh, we help the audience to take the decision to go to the White Night Club at Cup <laughs> and have fun there. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you. And Thank hopefully you. see you in St. Petersburg in June. Have a yeah, nice I hope you will have. <laughs> Thank, Thank you care. very much. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah. Waiting for Lorena. Here she comes. This was our first show of Talk About on Water Rugby. Um, we really hope you liked it. We didn't put in everything we had on clips and, uh, well, uh, um, things we talk, we'd like to talk about. Uh, we have many ideas, but we would be also interested to hear from you. Um, we will put a Facebook site online. You can send us emails. We'd like to have uh, clips and uh, things you're interested in, uh, we could talk about. We also are uh, planning to do it in the future that we have a um, live show. Uh, today we did all recorded, as you can see, of course. But it's uh, planning for the future just uh, to change that and see if we can have part of the program live. Yeah. What else? Spanish community? Um, it is important also that uh, we have your feedback. Yeah, so please use the Facebook uh, page that we're going to have. Yes, I already told them. Yeah, forget. <laughs> nee, es ist kacke. Lass uns nochmal. Ich war gar nicht unkonzentriert. Nee, nee, no, no, st stay with me. No. As you can see, it took us a, a weekend now and we are a little bit tired. And, uh, but still happy with a uh, we think it's a good program and uh, we like what we did and thanks to all the interview partners we had and uh, yeah see us for our next show and stay tuned for 
Talk about on the water rugby. Chicos, espero que les haya gustado el programa, que hayan podido tener información y que lo hayan disfrutado. Lo importante es también que, eh, que nos den su, um, su uh, opinión de, de, de las cosas que hemos puesto, de los temas que les gustaría que tratáramos. Eh, tenemos una página en Facebook para eso. Eh, esta vez no hemos podido hacer el programa live, pero bueno, está programado para el futuro. Y bueno, ya lo veremos... Eh, si lo podemos lograr para la próxima o las siguientes emisiones. Eh, eso sería todo por hoy. Uh, thanks so much for watching, for being there. And uh, see you in a month time. Nos vemos en febrero.